to a KCRA 3 investigation. When you take your kids to a daycare or you visit your parents in an assisted living facility, you most likely assume that they're in good hands. It certainly hope so, but as KCRA 3's Kevin Oliver tells us, the state of California is clearing people to work in those facilities before they investigate arrests for serious crimes. I did it. I felt bad every time I did it. For years, this Department of Social Services employees sent off these letters to employers of daycares, foster homes, and elderly care facilities. This notice is to inform you that uh, this person currently has a criminal record clearance. A clearance letter like this one is needed for applicants to start work in any of the 225,000 facilities licensed by the State Department of Social Services. But KCRA 3 has learned that the department, which says they are following state code, has been clearing people to work in these places, even if they have felony arrest records. I had to clear people that were arrested for assault and battery, uh, attempted murder, robbery, kidnapping, things like um, arson, child abuse. Under state law, if you're convicted of a crime, you cannot get a clearance to work in one of these facilities without a special exemption. But even if you are simply arrested and not convicted, the department still investigates the charges to see if you are a danger to others in these facilities. But the state says they can't delay someone's ability to work, so they give them a clearance letter like this one while they investigate. So while the state conducts their investigation, these people are allowed to work. No, they are allowed to work. This letter gives them the ability to work immediately. I'm Kevin Oliver from KCRA. KCRA 3 spoke to one of those workers. This man, whose identity we are not disclosing, confirmed he was arrested on child abuse charges in 1986. The charges eventually were dropped. But in 2013, he applied to work in a Northern California elderly care facility. And in June, the state sent a letter clearing him to work. He says that by the time he quit working there, after just a couple of months, the state was still doing their background check. The accusation shouldn't have kept you from working in the assisted living facility. I, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. But when did social services get so much power? It used to be background checks had to be completed for people who had been arrested for serious crimes before the clearances were granted. But then in 2011, an Oakland attorney, Peter Sheehan of the Social Justice Center, threatened to sue the state. He says the investigations were taking too long for people with arrests on their rap sheets, but for whatever reason, weren't convicted. These people had arrests. They weren't, in my mind, weren't related to any sort of potential threat to patients, and they simply uh, never received any sort of clearance. There were delays of four and five and six months. Not long after she and threatened to sue, the department changed its policy. So rather than speeding up the background checks and investigations, the department sends the clearance letters and investigates after the fact. If they find evidence of poor conduct that poses a risk, they will revoke that clearance letter. We were trying to speak with Mr. Lightborn directly. Despite our repeated requests, the director of the department, Will Lightborn, refused to talk to us. I'm Kevin Oliver from KCRA. So we caught up with him on his way into work. The situation is, is that if someone is charged with a crime but not yet convicted, that we have to investigate rather than simply exclude them. And so that's our procedure. But there are some people with arrests for various crimes that have been working in facilities for months before those background checks are complete. Isn't that true? Not if it's considered to be a serious um, charge. But that does not appear to be the case. KCRA 3 has obtained clearance letters of dozens of people working inside daycares, elderly care facilities, and even acting as foster parents. Arrests for things like elderly abuse, assault, child abuse, sexual abuse of minors. The state sent all of them letters clearing them to work before an investigator even looked into their arrests. If the state feels that, you know, more should be done, they should say so in a letter like this or not even provide this kind of a letter. Carol Herman is with the advocacy group foundation Aiding the Elderly. She says the clearance letters give the people who run the facilities the wrong impression. This is just gives the operator a false sense of security that that person that's coming to work there has been cleared when in fact they probably haven't. But DSS workers said they were required to send the clearances even when they didn't think it was right. I said, I don't want to do this. I object. It didn't matter. In Sacramento, Kevin Oliver, KCRA 3 News. The Social Services Director, Will Lightborn, told Kevin that this is a statutory issue, and if somebody wants to change it, that would be in the legislature's hands. This is new here at 6. Child care advocates and lawmakers are speaking out tonight about an exclusive KCRA 3 investigation.
It's disturbing because there's people who are working with our most vulnerable populations who just shouldn't be. As we first showed you last night, the Department of Social Services is routinely clearing people with criminal records to work in daycares, assisted living facilities, and foster homes before their background checks are complete. Now some are asking how this could happen. KCRA3's Kevin Oliver broke the story. He joins us now with reaction. Well, Kelly and Edie, we found dozens of cases across California where people with arrest records, some of them lengthy, were cleared to work in these facilities. Their employers were given the letters by the state allowing them to be employed, even though they may not meet DSS standards to work with children or the elderly. Just because somebody is working in your daycare center for your, with your child doesn't mean that they have no criminal record. They are stunning allegations made by a former Department of Social Services worker who asked us not to identify her for fear of retribution. People arrested for crimes ranging from assault to child abuse have been granted clearance to work in daycares and elderly facilities even though their backgrounds are still under investigation. It's a policy put in place three years ago after a lawyer threatened to sue the department for delays in granting clearances. It's disgraceful. It's, it's fraud. It's, it's just wrong. The director of DSS told us they're just following state law. The situation is, is that if someone is charged with a crime but not yet convicted, that we have to investigate rather than simply exclude them. And so that's our procedure. This is government malpractice. But Ed Howard of the Children's Advocacy Institute says DSS is misreading state law. That's not what state law says. The way that the department is interpreting it is wrong, and it's placing children and the elderly at risk, and the department should cut it out yesterday. Today, members of the legislature's human services committees express their concerns, telling KCRA the policy needs to be changed and has asked staff to start looking into the situation. These are people who are working with our most vulnerable populations, and so there should be a very high standard for the types of employees that are working with them, because these are people who oftentimes cannot speak up for themselves. Now, the Department of Social Services refused another request for an interview today. A spokesman said nothing has changed with their policy and said it's up to lawmakers if they want the policy or the law changed. A good follow-up to the story from last night. And today, a lot of people on our Facebook page are sounding off on it. You've got the, the daycare facilities, other facilities saying they checked with social services. They figured they're okay. What do you tell them now after the follow-up to your story? Well, there is an issue with this policy. The operators of the daycares and the elderly facilities assume because they have these clearances letters from the state that they're good to go. The letters don't give any indication that the state is still investigating and some employers have found out on their own about criminal backgrounds and in some cases have taken action before the state does. So it helps to at least shed a spotlight on this so people know what Absolutely. the potential problem is. All right, thank you. Good. Tonight, disturbing new details about who the state's allowing to work in daycares and adult facilities. There is something wrong here. A KCRA 3 investigation we aired earlier this week showed people arrested for many violent crimes, but still getting criminal clearances from the Department of Social Services before the investigations are completed. And tonight, a second social services worker tells KCRA3's Kevin Oliver this problem is much worse than the department would like people to know. Kevin's here now live to explain. That's right. Today, the Department of Social Services admitted there are nearly 1,200 cases that they know of where people have been given criminal clearances to work in daycares and foster homes before their background checks are complete. Those people all have arrests for violent or sexual crimes, and many of them are in our area. It's appalling to me that individuals who have been arrested for these violent sexual crimes get the immediate clearance. Ruby Cornejo has been working in the Department of Social Services Background Check Bureau for more than a decade. She analyzes criminal records to determine who should be given clearances to work in daycares, foster homes, and nursing homes from Sacramento to San Diego. She complained to management when she learned clearances were being sent out before the investigations were complete. What they're saying is that it's state law, but I don't understand that because there hasn't been a change in state law that would have, you know, forced them to make this decision. Cornejo says children and the elderly are being exposed for six months or more to people who shouldn't be working in the facilities. I personally have knowledge that there have been individuals there for over a year. Um, and they yes. shouldn't be. No, they should not. They shouldn't have even been there in the first place. Not, not one day. 
And she says the department has cut back the number of crimes it investigates to begin with. People with charges of assault and battery, shooting at a home, extortion, drug possession or sales, or animal cruelty and others are given automatic clearances. They just eliminated that and what they're doing now is they're, what they've been doing is clearing those crimes and not investigating them at all. The department refused another request for an on-camera interview about this issue. Social Services has maintained it's up to lawmakers to change their policy. We really need to look at what's going on here and they're definitely, it's, it's, it's very twisted. Now, a department spokesman said social services gets 200,000 requests every year for criminal clearances, but Cornejo called the clearance letters bogus because either the background checks haven't been completed or they may not have been done at all. I know a lot of people have been coming forward, commenting on your story and, and talking about things. Ruby Corneo talked to you today. Why is she coming forward now? Because she might be putting her job at risk, right? That's right, she may. She is worried that she will face retaliation from the department for speaking up about this. She's close to retirement, but she thinks that this is a dangerous policy that shouldn't be ignored. Yeah, it takes the department is wrong. Tonight, threat of a lawsuit and new legislation being drafted after a KCRA 3 investigation. That investigation finding that the state of California has been clearing people arrested for serious crimes before completing their background checks. It is the department that has chosen on its own to not investigate the backgrounds of the people who are caring for our children and our elderly. Tonight, change your criminal clearance policy or face a lawsuit. That's the demand a child advocacy group is making tonight. Yeah, this all comes after we first exposed how the State Department of Social Services cleared nearly 1,200 people arrested for serious violent crimes to work in daycares and elderly facilities. KCRE 3's Kevin Oliver broke this story just last week, and he's joining us now with a growing push to get the department to stop issuing those clearances, Kevin. That's right, Colston. A child advocacy group based out of a Southern California law school is now taking on this issue, demanding social services reverse course immediately and put the protection of children and the elderly first. The department is wrong. The department is not required by law to clear these people to care for our most vulnerable citizens. After seeing our investigation into the Department of Social Services and its background check policy, Ed Howard of the Children's Advocacy Institute at the University of San Diego's Law School penned this letter demanding the state change its practices immediately. It is the department that has chosen on its own to not investigate the backgrounds of the people who are caring for our children and our elderly. KCRA revealed the department has given criminal clearances to more than a thousand people working in daycares, foster homes, and elderly facilities before their background checks were complete. People arrested for rape, child abuse, and molestation. Even analysts within social services came forward last week saying the policy was wrong. They shouldn't have even been there in the first place. Not, not one day should, it, should they have been able to uh, work in these facilities. Now, Assemblyman Brian Mainshine, a member of the Human Services Committee, is working on legislation that would force the department to change its policy if the department doesn't decide to act on its own. Obviously, there is a, the vast majority of people who work in this field are good and decent people. In fact, that's why they're attracted to this field. But there is a significant percentage that are in a position to actually harm this vulnerable population. Late this afternoon, a department spokesman said social services plans on sticking with their current policy. When we have clear evidence that there is uh, some sort of inappropriate conduct involving someone who's been involved in an arrest, the department will take immediate action, and that's the law. Now, the Child Advocacy Group has given the department essentially 30 days to change its policy or it has threatened to go to court to force the department to do so. But at this point, it sounds like the department's kind of digging in its heels. It's, is it even going to review its policy? Uh, the department, is, the spokesman, said that they did review the policy when they changed it back in 2011, and they wouldn't say whether there had been any new discussions. The department insists it's up to lawmakers to change the law. Good follow-up on that story, Kevin. Thank you for that. We also no more automatic clearances for people with serious arrests who apply to work at daycares, elder care facilities, or become a foster parent. Tonight, an about face by the State Department of Social Services following a KCRA 3 investigation.
We really reviewed it and we looked at it and we said, okay, c c is there a way we can look at this differently? The state is changing its policy and will now require background checks for workers with felony arrest records. And this all comes after our KCRA 3 investigation revealed more than a thousand people with serious and violent criminal arrest had been given clearance by social services to work with the state's most vulnerable. Our Kevin Oliver joins us now with more on this major policy reversal. Kevin? That's right. No longer will people with arrest for violent crimes like child abuse or rape be automatically cleared to work in places with vulnerable children and elderly while their backgrounds are checked. The department says the new policy should be rolled out within days. Looking at it, reviewing the, the policy, it's pretty clear we overcorrected in terms of what that process should be. After KCRA 3 first exposed the social services policy of granting many criminal clearances before background checks were complete, the department announced a complete reversal today. In the cases of applicants who are applying, who have an arrest on their record, we are going to complete the investigation prior to issuing the clearance. Last month, we exposed how nearly 1,200 people arrested for crimes including child abuse, battery, and rape were given automatic criminal clearances to work in daycares and elderly homes. That policy has been in place since 2011 after the department was accused of delaying jobs to applicants who had arrest records but no convictions. We went too far the other way. This is an attempt to bring this back and to put in place a better balance that really focuses on what our highest priority is and always has been is the protection of those that are in our in care and facilities throughout California. After our investigation aired, Ed Howard of the Children's Advocacy Institute threatened to sue the department to change the policy. If they've changed that policy and stopped it, that's a tremendous step in the right direction. And the governor and the director of the Department of Social Services should be given a pat on the back and congratulated. But Howard says the department still needs to review many of the people they cleared during those three years the policy was in place. I think that the department should go back and take a hard look at those people it's given clearances to to make sure that California's children and our elderly are in fact in in good and safe hands. And the department is going to do just that right now. They're creating a task force specifically to review and investigate the clearances that have already been granted. They're also trying to come up with a system to complete investigations more quickly before clearances are given. And one of the whistleblowers that brought this story to our attention tonight tells me that changing the policy was her goal. Mm. Well, first of all, nice job in helping prompt such a big policy change. Will lawmakers still get involved at this point? Well, lawmakers were working on new legislation today, but in light of this latest development, whether that continues remains to be seen. And at the end of the day, it just, it just sounds like it makes mm -hmm. sense. Absolutely. So, all right, Kevin, thank you. The CRA 3 investigation could now lead to a change in state law. We exposed how people with serious arrest records were getting criminal clearances to work in daycares and elderly homes. Well, now a proposed law working its way through the Capitol would require investigations before clearances would be granted. KCRA 3's Kevin Oliver has been on this story. He's there live with more on some of the opposition to this possible law. Kevin? That's right, Colson. The Department of Social Services changed its policy soon after our story first aired in February. But now some lawmakers are looking to turn that policy into law so that the department can't just reverse course, as some are now demanding. For three years, the Department of Social Services was handing out criminal clearance letters like these to people applying for jobs at daycares and elderly care facilities. But a KCRA 3 investigation found the department was clearing people with arrests for serious crimes like murder, sexual assault, even child abuse, before investigating the arrests. This is an attempt to bring this back and to put in place a better balance. This March, less than two weeks after our investigation aired, the department changed policy and vowed to investigate before clearing people to work. What they've already done is very good, and what we're doing here in the legislature is to make sure that the good work that they're already doing can never be undone. Now Assemblyman Brian Manshine has proposed a bill that would make that policy permanent, requiring the state investigate arrest records. There's too much discretion, and it allows for the absence of an investigation. The change in policy is now under attack by an attorney with the Social Justice Law Project. Peter Sheehan filed this lawsuit demanding the department undo the recent changes to its policy. Mainshine says that makes his bill even more timely. A policy is just that. It's a policy. It's changeable at any moment. And so the, the law is different. The law is a requirement. And so this makes sure that an investigation actually take place. 
The ACLU objected to the new bill because it wants to ensure people with old arrest records don't lose out on job opportunities. Under our labor laws, we currently have provisions that say that arrests so solely cannot be the grounds for denying employment. I understand this is not an employment situation. But the bill's proponents say this just ensures workers will be checked properly before allowed to work with kids and the elderly. Because of your expose and investigative reporting, uh, the California legislature is weighing a permanent change in law that would prevent DSS from ever not investigating arrests ever again. Now, the bill has passed out of the House, uh, the Human Services Committee, and now moves on to the Appropriations Committee and possibly on to the Assembly floor. It still, it still has a ways to go, but it is working its way through the Capitol. Reporting live from the Capitol, Kevin Oliver, KCRA 3 News. And you talk about that lawsuit against the new policy. What are the chances that, uh, that this will even pass, that will force the department to reverse its course? Well, the lawyer has filed for a temporary restraining order in an Alameda County court uh, asking a judge to stop social services from changing its policy uh, and, and sticking with the old policy of giving criminal clearances uh, before finishing those background investigations. Right now, the law doesn't require an investigation, which is why they are trying to get this bill passed. It's uh, up to the judge uh, when this hearing happens uh, next month. They're reporting live uh, from the Capitol. Kevin Oliver, KCRA 3 News. Well, this uh, story started with you, and we know you'll continue to follow it all the way through. Kevin. A new developments in a KCRA 3 investigation that aired earlier this year. It involved the State Department of Social Services policy of clearing people to work in nursing homes, daycares, and other facilities before getting a background check. Our investigation changed department policy and now may change California law. Kevin Oliver now with the details. That's right, Colson Kelly. We are talking about people with arrest records for things like arson, child abuse, even sex with a minor. We found case after case where they were allowed to work in daycares, foster homes, and elderly care facilities. Now legislation that would prevent that is a signature away from becoming law. This is the bill now on Governor Brown's desk, 76 pages of new rules designed to ensure people who are arrested for violent crimes are given background checks before they start work with children, the elderly, and other vulnerable people. I have no regrets and I would do it all over again. Ruby Cornejo was one of two whistleblowers who brought the issue to our attention. A KCRA 3 investigation earlier this year revealed hundreds of people with arrests for violent crimes were granted automatic clearances by the Department of Social Services, while investigations into their backgrounds were still pending. After our reports aired, the department changed its policy. First and foremost, uh, individuals are not cleared up front in the beginning and they do not have access to the children and the clients. Our investigation also caught the attention of state lawmakers. And I really do want to give you guys credit, too, for bringing this issue to the forefront. So thank you for doing that. Both the Senate and the Assembly didn't think a simple policy change was enough. They voted Secretary. to put it into law. It seems to me, you know, the least of the requirements we could have is that somebody pass a background check that's caring for foster children or caring for somebody with developmental disabilities or caring for the elderly. And that seems really just a basic requirement. And now we're going to make sure that it's the law uh, and that it actually happens. The ACLU continues to oppose the legislation, saying in one letter it would have the effect of, quote, denying community care employment to people solely on the basis of prior arrests that did not lead to conviction. Yeah. But Ed Howard of the Children's Advocacy Institute says the safety of the children and elderly clients should come first. You ought to look into their backgrounds if they've been arrested for these crimes, period. That's from the planet obvious. It's really the least we could expect of our government. And happily, in this instance, it looks as though the law is going to be corrected to require that. Now, I contacted the governor's office, and as a matter of practice, Governor Brown doesn't discuss pending legislation, but it did pass the Senate unanimously and had considerable bipartisan support in the Assembly. Golston, tell me. It's a signature away from becoming law, a bill that was created because of a KCRA 3 investigation. It would require the State Department of Social Services to conduct background checks before giving out criminal clearances. Our investigation discovered people arrested for arson, child abuse, and rape were still getting cleared to work in daycares and foster homes. KCRA 3's Kevin Oliver reports the change was approved by lawmakers but actually originated somewhere else. 
This was no ordinary school project. There was a lot of digging and a lot of background work. It is not glamorous. The George Law students Lexi Howard and Christina Brown were determined to change California law after seeing a series of our reports. We started seeing the stories from Channel 3. First it was one and then it just grew into this huge investigation about the Department of Social Services. Our investigation revealed hundreds of people arrested for violent crimes got automatic criminal clearances from the state to work in foster homes, daycares, and senior centers. We think that those arrests must be looked at. The students are part of the law school's legislative public policy clinic, learning how to draft bills and see them through the process of becoming law. They turn to Republican Assemblyman Brian Mainshine, the vice chair of the Human Services Committee, to sponsor their bill. It really does take a team to run a bill. A bill is more likely to die or be killed in the process than it is to survive and get a governor's signature. Their bill grew from eight pages to 76 in the process. It was opposed by the ACLU, which argued the law would slow down and possibly prevent people without convictions from getting jobs. We think that protecting kids, protecting the elderly, protecting people in critical care institutions maybe is just a little more important than getting someone through the system of employment quickly. Let's do it right. Both students went into law school hoping to make a difference and now will leave the school having rewritten California law. For this to be part of my law school experience has been really meaningful. In Sacramento, Kevin Oliver, KCRA 3 News. A KCRA 3 investigation leads to a new California law protecting children in daycares, foster homes, and seniors living in elderly facilities. The law signed by Governor Jerry Brown will require the State Department of Social Services to conduct background checks before giving out criminal clearances. KCRA 3's Kevin Oliver joins us now with more on what this law is going to do. Kevin? Well, Kelly, when we first started investigating claims at the beginning of this year, we found hundreds of cases of people arrested for serious crimes who were granted automatic automatic clearances to work in facilities. The department changed its policy and stopped granting the clearances after our investigation aired, but now the law will make sure that the state continues to do the proper checks. So what happens now? In January, the law will change regulations so the department investigates serious arrests before clearing people to work. The department has already stopped sending out automatic clearance letters. By law, they cannot send these out without investigating. And the department cannot reverse their new policy unless a new law changes the regulations. Now, people with convictions for serious crimes are automatically denied clearances. This new law applies to people with arrest, but for whatever reason, don't have a conviction, either because they're awaiting trial or perhaps negotiated a plea bargain. The law doesn't detail how extensively they have to be looked at just that the Department of Social Services has to review them. Kelly? Great job.